Okay, this is a brief review of integration focused on trigonometric, exponential, and logarithmic functions. So we'll just look at some rules you probably once knew and then try some out. So here is a nice list of actually derivatives and integrals related to trigonome trigonometric functions, related to inverse trigonometric functions, and related to um, the log and exponential functions. So we'll just focus on this for a minute and then we'll try some out. So related to trig, um, you likely know these first three derivatives quite well. Therefore, you probably know these first three integrals qu quite well. And then the next three maybe are a little less common. Um, but just to review, we know that the derivative of sine is cosine. Therefore, the integral of cosine is sine. So this idea of deriving and integrating being uh, like inverse processes. Um, and then next, of course, if we know the derivative of cosine is negative sine, that tells me that if I were to integrate positive sine, I would get back a negative cosine. And then that last kind of common one, the derivative of tangent, would give back our secant squared function. Therefore, integrating secant squared would give back tangent. So you can take a look at these other ones here for the uh, reciprocal functions of cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Those are helpful to know as well. And this video won't focus so much on the inverse trig functions you see here, but we will mention these exponential and log functions. So here we see that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Therefore, integrating e to the x gives back e to the x. We know that the derivative of natural log is 1 over x. So if we were to integrate 1 over x, we would get back the natural log. Uh, notice when you integrate the restriction on the domain here um, of x, of course, we know the domain of a log curve is all x greater than 0, which is why you see the absolute value bars there. So let's go ahead and just try a few examples. This first one is more trigonometric. So we're integrating x minus cosecant squared of x. And this was one of those that I didn't mention, so let me float back real quick to this page. Um, you'll notice right around here that the integral of cosecant is cosecant squared is equal to negative cotangent. So that's pretty much the fact that we'll be using for this first example. So to integrate uh, the first term in our integrand here x, we'll just get back 1 half x squared from our power rule. And then the integral of negative cosecant squared of x would be, back to our sheet again here, a positive cotangent of x. Because again, notice here, if I change this to a negative, this would become a positive. So I get back a positive cotangent of x. This is an indefinite integral, so we'll tag on the constant of integration. And a nice reminder for any integration problem is we can check our work simply by deriving the result that we got. So if I take the derivative of 1 half x squared plus cotangent of x plus c, we know that the derivative of 1 half x squared would just be 2x over 2, or just x. The derivative of cotangent of x would give us that negative cosecant squared term. The derivative of our constant is 0, so the end result here matches what we had at the original and the original integrand. Our next one here is going to be more logarithmic in nature. So again, recalling what we saw on the previous summary sheet, we know that the derivative of natural log is 1 over x, therefore the integral of 1 over x is equal to the natural log of x. So in this case, we're really just applying this rule quite directly. 
Remember that this factor of 5, if you like, can be brought out front of the integral so that it looks even more like the rule we just mentioned. So 5 times the integral of 1 over x would become 5 times natural log of the absolute value of x plus a constant of integration since this is another indefinite integral. Again, it's a good idea to check our work and that check would occur simply by deriving the result we just found. So we want to make sure that the derivative of 5 times the natural log of x plus c gives back what we started with. So the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, the derivative of c is 0, and 5 times 1 over x sounds a whole lot like the 5 over x we started with. Let's just try one more together. This last one involves our exponential function. So as a brief note, we saw earlier that the derivative and integral of our exponential function is just itself. So the integral of e to the x is itself. So that right away tells us that the first term here integrates to simply e to the x. The second term is where some trouble could come in because of the exponent. The exponent here is 4x rather than just x. So we're asking ourselves what would we need so that when we take the derivative of something we get back e to the 4x. So I know I need an e to the 4x because the derivative of that is itself, but the derivative of e to the 4x would actually be 4e to the 4x because of the chain rule. The derivative of the exponent is just 4. But in the integrand, I don't have a, an extra factor of 4 floating around, so I'll simply divide by that factor of 4. So the integral of e to the 4x is 1 fourth e to the 4x, and we'll tag on the constant of integration. This maybe prompts us to talk about uh, an actual generalization of what we just did, which is that the integral of e to the kx, where k is a constant, would be e to the kx divided by k plus c. So that works all the time. And as we did in the previous examples, just a quick check. Is it true that the derivative of e to the x plus 1 fourth e to the 4x plus c gives back what we started with. So a derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. The power or the chain rule rather applied to our exponential function here. And cleaning up a little bit, I think we look pretty good. So that's a brief review of working with trig functions, log functions, and exponential functions.